Did you all know that seeds are the offsprings of the plant? Many of you might know it, but you might be wondering how and why. Will you be surprised if I say when you're enjoying a delicious meal of rajma chawal or dosa chutney, you're actually enjoying eating the seed? Yes, you read it right. The rajma or the dal with the sambar is made out of are actually the seeds which give birth to new plants, as is the coconut in the chutney. Much like animals, the plants also give birth to new plants, though the process is different. Unlike animals, the plants need to spread away their seeds so that new plants can come out and new species can be propagated. This is known as seed dispersal. You have just made a paper rotocopter and a paper fish at home or at your school. The way the rotocopter takes turns while coming down resembles the wings of a modern helicopter. The seeds of sycamore or maple tree fall in this pattern, as do many others that you might notice more closely now. Can you try to bring a variation in the rotocopter you have made? Try making the wings a little longer or shorter than the original one? Now try rotating it. Do you see a difference in the way it falls? You may perhaps notice that the shorter the wings, the faster they rotate, and the longer the wings, the slower the copter gets. The reason behind it is the resistance from air for the same mass. You can also try adding a pin at the end point. Adding paper clips to the paper helicopter would affect its speed. It is predicated that if you add more paper clips to the helicopter, then it will go faster because the extra weight will allow the helicopter to be pulled down with seemingly less air resistance thanks to an increase in its overall density. The more paper clips added to the base of the copter, the more the speed will increase. When the helicopter had less weight, the air slowed it down more, that is, the buoyancy played a larger role as the object was less dense. One can try various variations with both the rotocopter and the paper fish. As explained above, the two simplest are changes in size and or dimensions, as well as the weight. You can also alter the shape, add more wings to the rotocopter, make a longer tail in proportion to the body for the fish, make them with different materials, for example cardboard or newspaper or plastic cover, and then observe how each of these behave. Given the huge scope of variations and experiments, we'd love to hear from you if you come up with more. An interesting task would also be to calculate the rotational speed of the rotocopter as it comes down. Can you think of a way to come up with this? The process by which a seed is formed is a part of reproduction in plants. Seeds are embryonic plants enclosed in an outer coating which in turn protects it. The actual meaning of seed is something that can be sown. Due to the limited movement of plants, unlike animals, the seeds need to move away from the parent plant. The method by which these seeds are transported away from the parent plant is known as seed dispersal. Because of their limited mobility, plants depend on several modes or vectors for the transport of their seeds. They may be biotic, which are living organisms, or abiotic components. There are various methods by which this occurs. We will discuss one by one in detail in the later part of the topic. Plants make seeds that can grow into new plants, but if the seeds just fall to the ground under the parent plant, they might not get enough sun, water or nutrients from the soil because of crowding. Because plants cannot walk around and take their seeds to other places, they have developed other methods to disperse their seeds away from them in different areas. The pattern of seed dispersal is largely determined by the mechanism of dispersal. The different methods of seed dispersal are as follows, summarized by autocurry, so that can be by things like gravity, or by ballistic dispersal, which means the seed pod just bursts apart by allocary, which is by wind or by water, by animals, by humans. Some plants are serotonous and disperse their seeds in response to the environmental conditions. We'll go into more detail with autocary. Autochorous plants do not depend on any external vector for its dispersal. Gravity is probably the most common. Have you ever been to an apple orchard? If you have been there, you might suddenly have an experience like Newton, or you might see apples lying on the ground in front of you. 
Many fruits which are heavy in nature fall to the ground by the pull of gravity. The process by which the ripened fruit falls on the ground is known as abscission. As the fruit ripens, it gets heavier and falls to the ground due to the combined effects of the gravity as well as some chemical signals from the tree. The fruits might roll out to some distance on its own or are carried away somewhere else by other dispersal means. If the outer covering of the fruit is tough, it may roll out to some distance from the parent plant. The higher up the tree they are and the bigger their size, the further they can roll on the ground. If the fruit's outer covering is soft, it might break open when they hit the ground. The seeds then get scattered on the ground or may be carried away by other dispersal means. Some of the fruits or seeds which get dispersed by gravity are apples, passion fruit, calabash, salvia, etc. Ballistic dispersal, also known as balakuri, this is a type of dispersal where the seeds are forcefully ejected by explosion also known as explosive dehiscence. This method also does not need any external assistance. The internal pressure of the fruit creates the tension which leads to the explosion. This is often known as turgor pressure. An important example worth mentioning is Hura crepitans, also known as dynamite tree. This is so named because of its sound of explosion, which is so loud that it can throw the seeds for up to a distance of 100 meters. Peas and bean plants are examples of seed dispersal through explosion, as are the famous gulmohar tree as well as the camel hoof tree. Now to come to alakuri. Alakuri is the method wherein external agents help in the seed dispersal. It can be through wind, water, animals or humans, as enlisted earlier. When it comes to wind, also known as animokuri, wind is one of the most primitive methods of seed dispersal. Some plants have seeds that are very light and have feathery bristles like the ones in dandelion, swan plants and cottonwood. Due to the feathery bristles, the seeds are blown away with the wind and land up in faraway places. The wings make the seed look very fluffy and it almost seems weightless. The Two activities that you made with the rotocopter as well as the paper fish are good examples of the animokuri method of dispersal. Some tall trees produce seeds which are covered by twisted and turned wings. The placement and the turns of the wings are so accurate and balanced that it carries the seeds safely with them through strong winds. The technique of the wings is as you see in helicopters and modern planes today. You can get a simple idea from the paper rotocopter that you made at home. As said before, the seeds of sycamore, maple tree or hornbeam also fall to the ground spinning and whirling in air. They act with a combined effect of gravity and wind. When the spinning seed falls, air pushes upward against it. Air also pushes sideways on the arms of the spinning seed. The two arms are getting a push in opposite directions which makes the seed spin. There are a few trees that require wind to bend the stalk a little so that the pod may burst and seeds can come out. This does not mean that the seeds fall directly below the parent plant. The wind then carries the seeds a little away from them. Examples are poppy, evening primrose and dianthus. Water or hydrochory is the next possible means. Water is also a very common mode of seed dispersal. Though water plants spread their seeds by this mode, there are several terrestrial plants and trees that take the help of water to disperse their seeds. The examples of some water plants that do so are water lily and lotus. Plants growing beside a water body can often take the help of water for transportation of its seeds. The seeds might either be light in weight or they may be fluffy which helps in buoyancy. Coconuts are well-known travelers. The seeds have a hard outer covering which help them to float along salty water for a long time. Another good example is mangroves. Their seeds are unusual in that they begin germination while still on the parent plant and when they become almost a foot long, they drop to the ocean. These sticks float upright in the sea waiting to be flung onto the beach to continue germinating. Animals or zoochery Seeds are also dispersed by animals. There are a variety of seeds which are transported to different areas by animals and birds and to some extent by insects. 
the process wherein the seeds are dispersed by the exterior of the animals, for example their skin, bird beaks, is known as epizoochery. The number of seeds transported this way is significantly less. There are a few plants like mistletoe whose seeds are sticky. They stick to the beaks of the birds. The birds then rub their beaks on the bark of the tree to get it cleaned. These are left on the barks which give rise to new plants. Mistletoe is a parasitic type of plant. There are other birds that carry nuts like walnut, chestnut and hazel in their beaks and drop them on their way back home. Dispersal of seeds by birds is known as ornithochery. Furry terrestrial mammals are the agents most frequently involved in this type of seed dispersal. Bird-like seeds or fruits which have diasporas having hooks, claws, barbs, bristles, etc. cling to the agent's fur or hair. Another type of dispersal is seen by the forgetfulness of squirrels. Squirrels have a habit of hiding their fruits or nuts underground, but they sometimes forget their hiding place after a while. This gives rise to new plants. One of the most important types of zoochery is endozoochery. A plant surrounds seeds with an edible, nutritious fruit which attracts animals that consume it. Birds and mammals are the most important seed dispersers, but a wide variety of other animals, including turtles and fish, can transport viable seeds. Both birds and animals can digest only the juicy and the fleshy part of the fruit, and the seed is thrown out through the excreta. Apples, blackberry and cherries are some examples of this type of dispersal. Other types of zoochery are chiroptechochery, which is by bats, malacochery by mollusks, mainly terrestrial snails, and mimocochery by ants. The last type of dispersal is by humans ourselves, anthropochery. Seed dispersal is also done by us, though this is less in number. This can be done by clothes, shoes, or even cars. Cars carry the seeds to a longer distance. Some scientific terms. Embryonic is relating to an embryo in the earliest stage of development. Serotinous is an ecological adaptation exhibited by some seed plants where the seeds germinate gradually. Turgor pressure is the pressure of water pushing the plasma membrane against the cell wall of a plant cell. Buoyancy is the tendency of an object to float in a fluid, that is a liquid or a gas. The Janssen-Connell hypothesis is a widely accepted explanation for the maintenance of tree species biodiversity in tropical rainforests. And terrestrial pertains to anything that is on land or earth. Adaptation is a process of evolution where the organism makes most of its habitat. Seed dispersal is an adaptive process. Fires are common in Australia, so the plants there have suited themselves for surviving in that environment. Mangroves are found in tropical regions, so the seeds have adapted themselves to the watery environment. There are many examples like this throughout the world. Dispersal is needed for the evolution and migration of species. Dispersal of seeds away from the parent plant has a central role in two major theories for how biodiversity is maintained in the ecosystem the Janssen-Connell hypothesis, and recruitment limitation. Seed dispersal is essential in allowing forest migration. So the next time you see a plant, a tree, or a seed, think for a minute. How did it get there? See you later.